think it's possible to include the full Pokedex for a future version of Sword and Shield? No comment. Awful, awful games that have ruined everyone's lives. But when the files come out and you see like how lazy they were with these games. It's damn near unforgivable, low key. Allowing us to be much more expressive with each of the individual Pokemon. Game Freak lied. Uh, they lied to set people up regarding the national decks. Bane of my existence. The worst games ever created by Pokemon or by any company. And it's like, why? It lags like crazy. But this game just looks so basic. But with the transition to the Nintendo Switch hardware with its, you know, it's, it being much more powerful. You think they could throw a lot more behind it, so why don't they? We're on the Switch. We're on the switch. What's going on here? So I thought Sword and Shield sucked, but it turns out it was just in the wrong format. They made this entire game 2D. They put in some awesome side quests. Remember that guy, he's really important. They added the entire wild area complete with overworld Pokemon and raids. They added so many quality of life updates. They added a lot of features that we will talk about throughout this video. If Game Freak had put even half of these changes into the actual game, they would have been awesome. One of the quality of life changes that I love is that you can speed everything up. Just like this video, which is a playthrough in 15 minutes because you're in a hurry and I'm not that good at Pokemon. I thought that the 2D aspect of this game would make things worse, but it honestly added a certain sort of charm to everything. Because it's not just a vast open emptiness, it feels lived in and authentic as opposed to what we got. I pick up a score bunny and then lose my match against my rival because of course. Then Zamazenta shows up and shows me the power of being overleveled. I meet up with Sonya and talk about obligatory story things because they still didn't get rid of that but you can speed things up so it goes quicker now. Say it with me, 2D overworld sprites. This game is amazing. They have a Corviknight taxi system to take you wherever you want to go and my rival challenges me but I've harnessed the power of uh, fire. Leon sees my battle prowess and decides to sponsor both of us still. I sweet talk Sonya to give me a Dynamax band and we pick up our first Pokemon in a Galarian Zigzagoon because Obstagoon is awesome and a Rookity and I can't stress how important Corviknight is going to be in this run. And now it's time to explore the wild area. <clears throat> Sorry, don't know what came over me. They put a lot of the cool shops at the front and there are such things as raid battles. We're not going to do that yet because they're uh, too hard. We will catch a Toodle though because he's adorable. You might be thinking you're just a fountain of good nicknames, Shoop. Well, I actually choose them for my comments section, so maybe leave a comment and see what happens. Shoop Gaming makes no guarantee of comment to nickname ratio. Entry does not guarantee winning and all entrants affirm that they understand the terms and conditions. UCMJ paragraph 6105, valid while supplies last something words FDIC. We need to go find a hotel in Motosoke, but first we need to kick Team Yale's butt, who is arguably the worst team out of all of the teams. Then we attend an entrance ceremony of which we are the star because we are awesome, and other than that serves no real purpose. This guy gives us a Charmander, which brings me to the next really cool point about this game. You can in-game trade for every starter generation one through nine in this game. My score bunny evolves into Shino, and if you don't get that reference, that's completely fine. I beat up Bead, and look at that backdrop. I mean, it's incredible what the artists actually did with this game when they cared. Wow, would you look at that? Time to mention that there's a national dex in this game, people. We make our way through the first gym puzzle pretty easily, and then get to Milo. Full disclosure, of all the gym battles, I only get through one of them on my first try, and the rest take me at least two, sometimes three, which brings me to the next really cool part about this game. The difficulty. It's not impossible, but it does provide a little bit more of a challenge to make things interesting. Now I know that these games were made for kids, but hear me out on this. Some of the best times that I ever had playing video games were getting over a hard part that I just couldn't beat, which brings me to my next gym challenge, which is Nessa. I don't know what it is about water type gyms, but they just have my number. So I'm gonna go catch an Appalin and a Farfetch'd because Sir Fetched in this game is a little bit broken. So I'm gonna take these Pokemon back to Nessa and show her that we still get knocked out completely. I mean, this, this battle is honestly pretty tough. Her Goldeen was actually a menace that knocked my Pokemon out completely swept my team on more than one occasion. Once I got past that, it was time to face her Dreadnought, and I had to resort to another feature of this game, which is Dynamaxing. Now, hear me out. I know it's a gimmick, but the animations no longer take forever, and it's a completely viable strategy, and in fact, the only way that I was able to win some of these battles without severely overleveling, and I still almost lost. And it's here that I dubbed Nessa my actual official rival. Wouldn't that be cool if a Pokemon game let you pick out of whoever you wanted to be your rival? I go for a spot of tea with Chem and Rose, and I'm really sorry to my UK audience, honestly. I, I don't, I mean, no offense, your accent is just really cool. Sorry, I'll stop. I beat up Bead because he didn't learn his lesson, and then I forced Kabu.
Nobu to go to his actual job. Marnie thinks that she's my rival for some reason, and I'm reminded that this game suffers from just having too many people. Hop, Bead, and Marnie all think that they're competing against me, but I'm better than that, and Nessa is my true rival. I get a couple evolutions, and then I go face Kabu, who sends out a Ninetales that I get very afraid of because it nasty plotted a few times. Luckily, Dreadnought can take the hit and knock Ninetales out with a Rock Tomb. I send an Apple in for a nice sacrifice, and then I Dynamax my Emo Rabbit, and I thought I was just gonna sweep from there, but things go down to the wire, and I take him out with my Corvus Squire. Ooh, check out my rhymes. I've got... I've... I've got dimes and and look look story stuff I'm honestly shocked by how close they were able to model this game after the originals what you're watching right now is a montage of hop just sort of having his way with me because he must have heard that I made Nessa my official rival and he didn't take too kindly to that and so now he's stalling me and being completely annoying. I actually have no idea how his team lost to Bede's team. My Farfetch evolves into Surfetched and I catch myself a Dracovich replacing Applin because he really wasn't holding his own weight against literally anybody so he's gonna catch his replacement and it's time for me to face Alistair which brings me to another cool point about this game. In this game you are going to face every single gym leader. See, in the original games, you're only able to face eight of them, although there's technically ten gym leaders available. So, in Stow on Side, we're gonna face both Alistair and Bay, and in Searcher, 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 Worcester. We're gonna face both Melanie and Gordy. Bede gets disowned by Chairman Rose, and we go fight Bay. And to answer your question, no, I will not change how I pronounce that name. We picked up Pyro Ball on our Cinder Race, which is still a pretty broken move even in this game, but it's not gonna be our main ace, if you know what I mean. I need friends. We go to Boundlay and then fight through Pink Blaine's gym and I decided I need to level up a little bit so I challenge my first raid and we win and I get some cool rewards and I might have over leveled a little bit too much for this. This is the one gym that I did end up completely sweeping through mostly due to the fact that I over leveled. But it really wouldn't be a shoop video if I didn't screw something like that up. My Obstagoon is finally here and I love the design of Obstagoon and honestly most of the sprite work in this game is incredible especially for some of the newer generation mons. They really took their time with it and even the back sprites look pretty dope. I mean, the game just looks and feels good. And the champion of our run has arrived. Probably my favorite Pokemon in the entire game is Corviknight for a lot of reasons. One, his design is stupid awesome. Two, he's got Power Trip and Hone Claws. And when you use those two in this game, it's a little bit broken. But first we had to get through Gordy and we use Surfetch to do so. And then we have to get through Melody and we use Surfetch to do so. Surfetch is such a great Pokemon. I mean, look at him. And that sly grin of an anime protagonist who wouldn't like this evolution of our beloved Farfetch'd? And oh my gosh, look, another cool feature about this game, the bike. The water bike, you can just start going. There's no animation, there's no stupid delay. You just get on your bike and you go on the water and that's it. It's time for me to fight Pearson. I actually lost to this a few times because of that stupid Malamar. My Obstagoon fights his Obstagoon and mine loses by just like half an HP. And then it's Corviknight's turn to steal the show. And now we get to the point of the story where Leon tells me that the world is ending, but don't worry about it. Go fight Brihan, the dragon type trainer who starts out with a Gigalith and also has a Sandaconda on his team for no reason. What is up with dragon type trainers and gym leaders just not using dragon type Pokemon? Like for Charizard and Gyarados, it's forgivable, but for Gigalith, he doesn't even look like a dragon. And now it's time to start the tournament, and I actually really like what Sword and Shield did with this. They made this a tournament, which makes the game feel a little bit more like the anime, where you fight against a bunch of people that you started training with. This kind of makes me forgive the fact that they put in so many rivals, but I mean, Nessa's our true rival anyway, so. We'll fight our fake rival first, and actually this fight ended up feeling like a true rival match. We were both knocking each other's Pokemon out, he would knock out some of mine, and I would knock out some of his. I had to Dynamax in the end just to have some type of chance against his Rillaboom. It was a really good fight. But then the story interrupts my tournament arc and I have to go fight some people in Rose Tower. In order to prevent the devastating effect of me interrupting a meeting, a full-grown woman decides to fight a child. But she gets wrecked because I have Corviknight. Rose Tower did have the unintended effect of overleveling my Cinder Ace by a wee bit too much. But that's okay because the flames of my battling are doused 
by my true rival coming in and absolutely wrecking me. She beat me like six times in a row before I was able to finally set up with Corviknight a little bit, but that almost didn't matter because her Dreadnought was just a, a stinking monster. Surprisingly enough, Razor Shell would have taken my Cinderace out completely, so I had to get that Leaf Blade off. Remember how I said how this game wasn't tough and that you can't just use one move over and over again to swamp your opponents? That's mostly true, except in the face of Alistair and my Obstagoon, because holy cow. And then it's time to face Raihan again, who finally starts to use Dragon-type monsters, and they honestly do a lot of damage. They take most of my team out so that I only have the use of Sir Fetched and Dreadnought. Thankfully, Sir Fetched is an absolute monster who tanks an Earthquake by Flygon and is able to carry me to my victory. And then I get to face, oh no wait, there's some obligated story time. Okay, look, the stories of Pokemon games have never been good. They've always been mid-tier at best. The story is awful and it's always gonna be awful until Game Freak decides to hire a writer. My problem is with the Switch versions, they tried to shove that story down our throats, and in these versions, you can pretty much skip that and get straight to the action, which I really like. The fight against Eternatus in this game is probably one of the best boss fights that I've had in Pokemon in quite a while. It actually feels like a boss. It doesn't let you Dynamax, it doesn't let you use the Sword and Shield Pokemon. You are essentially going in with a six-man SWAT team trying to take down Master Hand, and it it's awesome. It finally makes me feel like I've accomplished something after I've defeated this thing. I had to actually use items and plan and strategize and it just, it felt good. So I normally will just play the last fight out and let everyone watch and comment on how much I'm terrible at Pokemon and why I can't win at these matches. And I'm still gonna let this match play out pretty much as unedited as possible. But because a lot of people stopped watching at this point, I thought now would be a great time to introduce some of the features that I didn't really get the chance to talk about during the playthrough. This game has been in development for a while now, but they finally released the full English version. So if you've been waiting on the English version to drop, this is it. It's out and it's got everything in its entirety. All the NPCs, all the gym leaders, all the dialogue, all the story. I will say, if you do some of the story portions out of order, like you go to the cafe at the wrong time, then when you go back in, it will be in Portuguese or Spanish, but it, it really doesn't affect the gameplay at all. It is the full Galar region. And when I say the full Galar region, I mean it. It's got all the DLC as well. The Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra post game are available. I didn't do it during this playthrough because I felt like that added an extra few hours of gameplay that would probably get boiled down to a few minutes at the end anyway. And this way you get to experience it on your own without me literally spoiling every single portion of it like I did in this game. There are Pokemon up to generation 9 in this game and they really flushed out the Pokedex. It's not quite the full Pokedex, like not everything is there, but it's way more than Sword and Shield decided to give us. And you know what? They didn't even have to compromise on any of the animations or any of the cool back sprites or any of the cool Pokemon designs crazy. There are no HMs in this game, you can do everything without them, like you saw me use the bike to go over the water, and there's a Corviknight taxi system, and the rock that I moved at the beginning, you don't need a Pokemon to know strength, it just automatically lets you push that boulder around. Though not really listed as one of the features, one of the things that I thought was really really cool about this ROM hack is that they used all the assets from Fire Red to make this, so there are some places that seem like it's a little bit lazy in design, but honestly, I really really appreciate the creativity that went into making this game. Before I get onto probably the coolest features about this game, it would mean the world to me if you would go ahead and hydro pump that subscribe button because I'm getting pretty close to getting monetized and I think that'd be pretty neat. Okay, now in one of the more recent patches that they made to this game, they actually added some Hisuian forms. So now you can get Hisuian Typhlosion, Decidueye, and Samurai. They'll all evolve from the second stage using a link cable. Well, not a real link cable, you get the idea. There's a link cable item in the game. In true showmanship form, I have saved the best for last. These next few features are what really make this game awesome and probably, no, no, definitely a game that you need to play in 2024. They added all the gimmicks, and I do mean all the gimmicks. They added Ultra Beasts. They added Z moves. You can Gigantamax. Do you remember the side quest guy that I showed you at the beginning of this video? Yeah, he's important now because he's what gives you a Mega Ring. That's right, there are Mega Evolutions in this game, people. If you play no other ROM hack of 2024 and you've got an itch to play some Sword and Shield, I highly suggest you play this game. No, I can't give you a download link, and no, I can't show you where to get it, but if you know how to Google a couple of things, I, I think you'll figure it out. 
As I'm recording this video, the last update that happened to this game was on May 3rd, meaning that this game is continuously being updated, so it's only going to get better from here, and it'll keep getting better with things like your support into downloading the game and playing it and having a good time, etc. Anyway, if you liked this, you'll probably like my video on this other ROM hack literally named Pokemon Awesome version. Have a great day, guys.